Hi everyone. When you create your web API projects, how do you decide what return types to use in your actions? There are different return types that we can use inside the controller, and each has its specifications. Well, in this video, I will talk about different return types that we can use with ASP.NET Core Web API actions, and when should we use those different types. So, there are four different types that we can use in our controller. Specific types, I action result, action result T, and HTTP results. That said, let's start with the specific types first. For that, I have already prepared an employee's controller. You can see I am injecting some sort of fake repository here, and for each controller in this video, I will do the same. Now, in its simplest form, an action can just return a specific type like a string, a custom entity, or even a collection of records. Well, let's take a look at one such example. It will be a get action, and let's simply return a list of employee records and name it get employees. Inside the action, I will return the result of the get employees method from the repository and convert it to a list. So, this action will return a 200 OK status code, along with a collection of employee objects when it runs successfully. Of course, in case of errors, it will return a 500 error status code along with error details. Even while generating API documentation using tools like Swagger, it will generate this possible successful outcome in the responses section. Well, let's check that out. As you can see, I have an endpoint in Swagger, and as soon as I send the request, I get the result and the proper status code. Now, since this action doesn't have any validations or multiple return paths, returning a specific type works well here. However, if we want to add a validation here and return different results based on that validation, like bad request or unprocessable entity, this approach won't work. In that case, we have to use either I action result or action result T types. I will explain how to do that a bit later. Now, one thing I have to mention here. It is a common practice to return a collection from controller actions using the I enumerable T type. However, there is an important behavior of ASP.NET Core that we need to consider before choosing this type. ASP.NET Core buffers the result of the action endpoint that returns I enumerable T before writing them to the response. This means even if we get the underlying data part by part asynchronously, ASP.NET Core will wait till it receives the complete data and then send the response at once. For instance, let's create another action here. So I will add another GET request with the addition to the route. And then let's return the I enumerable employee and name the action get active. Inside, I will use a for each loop and extract each employee from the method that I call from the repository named get active employees. This method supports returning data part by part using the yield keyword. Finally, I will use the yield keyword and then return each employee. So, even though I want to create an action that returns each employee one by one to the client, this action will still wait till it receives all the data and then return everything together. But if you really want to support asynchronous iteration, we need to use the I async enumerable T with the await for each syntax. That said, let's check this action. With I async enumerable T and the wait for each syntax, the action will return each element as it arrives. That said, let's check that out. You can see two new endpoints here. And let's open the developer console and select the network tab. And now I can send the active request. As you can see, we are waiting for 300 milliseconds to get a response from the server. That's because I delay returning each employee inside the repository class for 100 milliseconds. So, it is obvious we are waiting for all of them to get together here. 
but let's clear the console now and send another request. This time you can see a different picture. We are waiting only 100 milliseconds for the last employee, where the first two are already downloaded. Excellent. Now, just quickly, I would like to let you know about our Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book, which you can find linked in the description below. Feel free to check out the book if you want to master all the best practices to create powerful, production ready web APIs. And also, check out Blazor WebAssembly course to create the client C -sharp apps without using JavaScript. Again, the links are in the description below. Now, let's move to the I action result return type. Whenever an action has multiple return paths and need to support returning multiple action result types, then I action result is a great choice. Several types derive from the action result type and each of them represents an HTTP status code. For instance, when we want to return a 400 bad request response, we can use the bad request result type. Similarly, we can use not found result for returning a 404 not found response and OK result for returning a 200 OK response. On top of that, the controller base class has defined some convenience methods, which is equivalent to creating and returning an action result type. For instance, if we want to return a 400 bad request response, instead of using a new bad request result method, we can just write return bad request. The same goes for the not found result or the OK result. Now, let's see this with a simple example. I have a simple action with the ID parameter. Then I specify which response types this action will produce with the produces response type attribute. The first one uses the status code static class with the status 200 OK value. But also, I have to provide the type here which is the employee type. Since I can return multiple types using the iActionResult interface, I specify that I will return 404 as well. Then inside the action, you can see if I didn't find an employee, I return 404 with a not found method. And in another case, I return OK with that employee. Now, an important thing here. While using the iActionResult type, it's important to provide the produces response type attribute for all possible scenarios, since multiple response types and paths are possible. Well, let's see why with an example. Let's hide these two attributes first and run the app. You can see a request here, but we don't have any information about the response types. Okay, let's return these attributes and run the app again. And this time you can see a lot more details. Also pay attention that we must specify the type property in the produces response type attribute. We have to do that for the I action result return type to have this example value scheme here. Now let's add an asynchronous action method for creating an employee record that returns the I action result type. As you can see, I have to use an async task I action result here to make this action asynchronous. I also have two possible return types in this action. In case the validation rule fails on the employee name field, it returns a 400 bad request response. On the other hand, once the employee record is created successfully, the action returns 201 created success status code. Note that we are using the created at action method which will return the newly created employee record along with the response. Also, one more thing to mention here. While using ASP.NET Core Web API, if we mark controller with the API controller attribute, it will automatically trigger an HTTP 400 response if there is a model validation error. So for example, if I don't provide the name of the employee in the request, it will automatically return a 400 bad request response. Even though if I create a validation logic here inside the action, the request won't reach it at all. Of course, this can be fixed without removing the API controller attribute and I strongly recommend watching my model validation in ASP.NET Core Web API video to see a solution to this 
and gain a lot more knowledge regarding the validation and how it can be removed from the actions. Now, let's move on to the action result t return type. While using the action result t, we can either return an action result type or a specific type. One advantage of using this type is that we can skip that type property of the producer's response type attribute. This is because the expected return type is obvious from the t parameter in the action result t type. Similarly, while returning the action result t type, it supports implicit casting of both type t and action result to action result t. This means instead of writing return OK employee, we could simply return employee and it will give the same results. So let's check all of that. You see a new endpoint here, and when I expand it, you see both response codes and also the example value scheme, even though I don't have the type property in the produces response type attribute. Also, when I send a request, I get the result and the status code. However, remember that C# doesn't support implicit casting on interfaces. So just for an example, let's take a look at this simple action. For instance, if we are using action result i enumerable t as the return type on an action, we can't return an i enumerable t type as the implicit casting will not work in this case. One solution for this is to convert the i enumerable collection to a list using the toList method before returning it. Next, let's see how to create an asynchronous action using the action result t type. And as you can see, there is nothing new here that we didn't see in our previous controller with the async action. Finally, let's check the HTTP results return types in the controller. You can see that in both situations, I'm using the i result interface or task i result for the return type. To be able to use the OK, not found, or bad request methods, I need to call the static results class first and then the appropriate method. Also, as you can see, I have to use the produces response type attribute, the same as with the I action result return type. Without it, we will not have any description in the response section for the request in Swagger. That said, you will not see this type of response that often inside the regular controllers because it is mostly used with minimal API implementations. Well, I can show you that inside the program class. Let's simply add the same code here we have in our previous controllers. Here, I don't have to state explicitly that I will use the I result return type and the rest is the same. Just this time, we can use these different methods to specify what type these actions produce. Excellent. With all the different return types covered, I can finish the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.